of you that have been watching me for a while, you'll know that way back in the day, in episode 33, I did a big old feature on the ex Paul McCartney Wings Over Europe tour bus. Now, since that video went live, I've had a few interactions with the bus. Of course, I saw it at the NEC for its debut showing, and I also went to its place of residence to have a little play with it and do a bit of filming because I was actually going to do a follow up video on that bus. This is the start yeah. button. Yeah. Yep. Oh, she sounds good. But something very drastic has happened. My friend Tom, the current owner of the bus, has decided that the chapter in his life that features that bus is drawing to a close, and he has chosen to actually sell it. So how do you go about selling a total and utter piece of automotive history? You get these guys in. He has chosen to go with Car and Classic, and not only that, he's actually chosen to use their online auction platform. And what's really cool, they've invited me, Pete and his bus, to come down and have a look at her, do a bit of filming and present this bus for sale to the world. And what's even cooler, they've allowed me to share the film they've created on this channel for you guys. So sit back and let's have one more good look at this wonderful piece of kit. I'm here today at this beautiful old building to have another look at the most famous bus that has ever featured on the channel. And the Car and Classic crew and I have been working all morning to create a little video to demonstrate to the world how unbelievably cool this bus actually is. And here is that video. Welcome to Car and Classic, and we cordially invite you to join us as we cast our minds back to the early 1970s. The Beatles' all-conquering reign had recently come to an end, and the eyes of the world were transfixed steadfastly on the Fab Four, keen to know what their next move would be. Thankfully, Paul McCartney decided to continue his musical journey, and along with his wife Linda, formed the rock band Wings, who, over the next 10 years, would go on to become known as one of the most successful acts of the decade, releasing five number one albums consecutively. But what's that all got to do with Car and Classic, you might be thinking? Well, in 1972, Wings were quite literally a band on the run, and Paul McCartney needed transport for the upcoming European summer tour, which would see the band travel 7,500 miles over nine different countries. Eschewing the usual private jets and luxury limousines of the rock star set, Paul McCartney would hand-pick a 1953 Bristol KSW 5G open-top bus as his steed of choice immediately cementing it into the annals of rock and roll and automotive history. And we have that very bus available for your bidding pleasure right here at Car and Classic via our auctions platform. This is a big one guys, quite literally. So without further ado, and I've been waiting all week to say this, Car and Classic gives you wings, a legend of rock and road. Here we are on top of the Wings tour bus, WNO481, and I'm joined by Pete of Pete and His Bus, who you can find on YouTube. We'll put a link in the description. Um, I think it's safe to say he knows a little bit more about the subject than I do. Um, Pete, thank you for joining us. <laughs> no pressure then. No, not at all. Um, uh, we are on top of this bus, but it yeah. wasn't historically an open top bus. This was converted in 1965, I believe, to the, to the open top set setup it is now. Yeah. And then after that, obviously, there was a three year restoration ending in 2022, yeah. which gets it to the point where it's at now yeah. and the condition it's in now. Yes. Um, because before that, I think, I believe you were saying it, so it was a bit of a wreck. Uh, yeah, completely. I mean, it depends how far back you want to go, but um, obviously the significance about this particular vehicle is that Paul McCartney used it on the tour uh, in 1972 with the Wings Over Europe. And after that, um, it had a very, very colourful life. It was used by a tour operator internationally uh, till about 82. And then um, the bus was really tired at this point. You know, it hadn't had any major 
major restoration work for ages. And so this um, tour operator called Tricentral, they thought, you know, we need to get rid of some of our old buses, uh, you know, particularly this one, this ain't working, that's not working. So they, you know, they have this sale in their yard and a bunch of other smaller time bus operators come by to see if they can pick up any of the old stock. And this chappy called Roger White turns up and he sees the Oslo blind on the okay. front. Yeah. And he's thinking to himself, why would a Bristol uh, from the 50s have gone to Oslo? That is such a huge distance. So he did a bit of digging. And of course, he found out straight away that it was uh, Sir Paul McCartney's uh, tour bus. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it didn't really matter what the bus was like at that point. He went, I'm having this because I love it. And, and I totally get it. You know, that, that, you, it's such a, um, uh, an interesting piece of history. So he bought it and then he spent, uh, I think, about 10 years um, putting it back in the spotlight. Um, he didn't have it painted in the fantastic psychedelic artwork though, which really surprises me, but he had it sort of painted red, but he had a bit of writing on the side saying, this is Paul McCartney's old tour bus. And then it was used for uh, Great British film rallies, uh, TV bits with Scylla Black. Um, it was used for the BAFTA tribute for Julie Andrews and you know, used to drive celebrities around. He, he really managed to uh, put it back in the spotlight. And then in the uh, early nineties, um, I think his career or his working life was probably coming to an end. Okay. He painted it back to the uh, amazing color scheme that we've got today. Uh, and he took it to a Beatles convention in Holland. And uh, can you imagine driving this to Holland, <laughs> let alone Oslo, yeah. right? And, um, and then he took it to the convention as a sort of last hurrah. And then uh, he decided to take the bus to auction a long time ago, uh, but sadly it didn't sell. Um, and that's where the story takes a completely different turn because it was sort of sold behind closed doors, undisclosed amount, a private sale, and it went to Tenerife. And um, uh, it was on the island for 24 years uh, and no restoration work or anything was done to it at any given point. Um, it's probably done it a favour though, really, because if it was in this country <clears> for 25 <throat> years in this weather. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Tenerife, you know, is much kinder on its vehicles, uh, but trust me, it was in, it was in a massive state. Yeah. Um, and the way it was discovered was really cool because um, the guy had it outside of his cafe for a while as like a rock and roll tourist attraction, which, you know, I'm mean, spot on, you know, good marketing. Uh, and, and I'm sure that was a massive, massive success. Uh, but then it sort of fell into disrepair and it didn't look as fresh anymore as he wanted to. So he put it at the back of his garden uh, because he vowed to never sell it. Uh, and his, the back of his garden happened to be on a Google Street View. <laughs> <laughs> and so in 2007, only halfway through its stint being in Tenerife, all these rumors started flying about on the internet because there's this really amazing shot. You know the, the Google Street View white arrows? Yeah, yeah. You get the picture and this bus is sitting at the back of his garden in this ravine. And it just, you know, it looks a state, but you know, in a really lovely, lovely kind of way. Um, Patina, I think they call Oh it. man, but, but like <laughs> in spades and then some. Yeah. And, um, and so at that point, uh, lots of rumors and people getting excited about it again and sort of reminiscing about what this thing actually did. And then it took someone uh, from the island who was British, but living there, it took them, I think the bones of uh, seven or eight years to get all the paperwork in line, to get the funds together, okay. to actually put it on a ship and take it all the way back to the UK. Yeah. yeah. And I remember at that point, Paul McCartney himself actually uh, tweeted about it. Uh, oh, really? saying a okay. really lovely moment and then uh, and then the plan was to sort of uh, do charitable work with it use it for events and festivals but sadly uh, Justin James who had managed to get the bus to the UK he just could not get the funds together to uh, do the restoration so uh, there it sat again for a long time and ultimately he took it to auction I think in about 2019 and that's where our hero Tom turns up and he buys it out of auction. That's the owner, current owner. That's owners. the current yeah. owner. Uh, he's a fantastic guy. He has put his heart and soul into this project. Um, and he's a, he's, a, he's a musician. He's a massive music lover. He's a great admirer of, of um, Paul McCartney. And he just loves his whole era. So it was, the, it was the perfect project for him at that stage of his life. Yeah, so, yeah he's done a fantastic job. And, and speaking of, obviously, the Paul McCartney connection, this is now the, the Paul McCartney stage, isn't it? Where he's... Yes. He, he, it was an unveiled after the restoration. It was unveiled at the uh, NEC, the, the classic motor yes. show. Yes, yeah. There were bands playing on top of yeah. there, and yeah. the, the grand reveal of you know all the work that's oh, been yeah, put yeah, into yeah, this yeah. bus to bring it back to essentially how it was. That's right. When it travelled around Europe. That's right. Much nicer days than today. <laughs> now and, we're all and, right. and, and and the band didn't they? They had mattresses and bean bags. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And it was just this bohemian <clears throat> space up here. Really, really where cool. Where they yeah. could create 
they yep. could relax and you know it's, it's just a really it was a really nice place to be a relax, really, yeah. coming off the back of obviously the Beatles tours and that just craziness yep. taking a step back yep. saying you know I don't, I'm not going to go on a jet we're not going to do limousines no. we're going to no. have this bus at what 35 miles an hour top speed about that and he took his family with him yeah, yeah the bunk beds are downstairs yeah. his there's, wife, there's, kids. there's pictures of him with, the, with baby Stella oh, on the bus beautiful and yeah really really lovely yeah. and, and actually a credit to Tom because he you know when you do a restoration of an old vehicle you kind of often like to put your own stamp on it um, and but some people do that too much yeah. and then they change uh, what it's all about whereas he's managed to turn this into a functional area upstairs as a musical stage with the drop down and the pillars but he hasn't taken away any of the real essence no. of what this vehicle no. is and what it should be. Yeah, and you've still got that Beatles inspired artwork <clears throat> on the side, the kind of yellow submarine magical mystery. Yeah, tour. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it just evokes that era completely, yeah, doesn't it? That's right. Um, and uh, really nice touches like the seats downstairs. Um, he was able to trace the original set of seats that were in it at the time. Oh, wow. Uh, the upholstery is completely correct. I mean, you could not buy, make, or manufacture that today. So much like the rest of the bus, the interior here has been fully recommissioned. And this is where Paul McCartney, Linda McCartney, friends, family, the band, they would have sat, eaten, drank, discussed, chatted, and even slept whilst on tour. Chances are some of Wing's biggest hits could have been written right here on this bus. Um, and if you look at the pictures up here as well, even though this is now a multifunctional space, the layout was roughly like this. Mm -hmm. It is all correct. Um, so yeah, I mean, I take my hat off to that man all day long for making such a wonderful thing and uh, also allowing the people of our generation and the generations to come to actually enjoy such an unbelievably cool bit of kit. Yeah, because there was the, um, the competition, wasn't there? The, the, the Magical Mystery Tour competition in 2023 last year where um, it gave people an opportunity to actually come onto the bus yep. and do a, a, a kind of a whistle-stop tour of all the, the, the important Beatles yep. and, and McCartney sites of London. You've yep. got the, the Hard Rock Cafe where they were the first band to play yep. at the first Hard Rock Cafe, yep. the Wings we're talking about now. Can you imagine having that in your cupboard of accolades? I know, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, and they obviously went past Paul McCartney's old house in London and, yep. and a few of the Abbey other Road spots. Studios. Yeah, Abbey of Road course, and yeah. where the Beatles did the rooftop concert. Yep. And it was just, a, like you say, just a really nice way of kind of giving back and, 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 and giving the bus almost to, to oh, fans. Oh yeah, 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 Because obviously you've got the other two uh, Beatles psychedelic cars. You've got George Harrison's Mini. The Mini. Which <coughs> re remains in Harrison family collection. Correct. And uh, Rolls-Royce, John Lennon Rolls-Royce, which yeah. is in a museum. Yeah, yeah. You, you can potentially see them, but yeah. you, can't, you can't use them, you no. can't be on them, and you can't drive them. Yeah. Exactly yeah. that. Yeah. And, so, and this kind of is, is, is almost better because you can do that. Yeah, you can, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and she works. It's completely and utterly functional. Yeah, um, but we, I mean, you hear the, the, the five-cylinder motor start up. And such it's, an original sound. It's, it's it? on yeah. point. It sounds fantastic, it looks yeah. fantastic. It really does, and yeah. it runs fantastically. And actually what's also a really cool fact is of course uh, Sir Paul McCartney's name and details are all written on the, on the side of the bus, they're all over it, but he actually got written permission from the man himself yeah. uh, to have all these decals on there. And it's really cool that he went through the, uh, through the length to do that. And it's also, I think it's the feather in his cap, is the fact that Sir Paul McCartney went, do you know what, I love this, yeah. I sign off on this. He's proud of it. It is correct. Yeah. And for Tom, that was, you know, that was the, the, the main goal to get approval exactly and yeah. that transfers to the new owner whoever yeah. whoever is the lucky person yeah. to buy this will, oh, that will transfer course. to yeah, them yeah. and so they he, can yeah. they can continue with that those rights exist and you know everybody involved in this magical uh, story they've all agreed this is what it is it's correct it is yeah and it's just really cool <laughs> Paul McCartney is one of the most famous and revered names in music. Not only was Wings an incredibly successful band, but it was also an enduring love story between two people. Here was an artist discovering the next chapter of an esteemed musical journey, and WNO481 is a huge part of that legacy. This then is further propagation of that legacy, the legacy of Paul McCartney, of Wings, of the Beatles, of WNO481 itself. Whether it be a trip to London town or to the heart of the country, with a little luck, you could be the next proud owner.
So which one of you out there is going to be brave enough to put your money where your mouth is and bid on the ex-Paul McCartney tour bus? As you can imagine, I'm quite tempted to place a bid myself, but I'm not sure if my pockets are deep enough. Either way, let's hope whoever ends up owning this bus takes it out and actually uses it so that all the rest of us can enjoy the sight of this wonderfully unique vehicle on the roads. <laughs> Who is going to buy it and how much are they going to pay for it? This is why auctions will always be a thing, won't they? It's actually quite exciting. <laughs> Anyway, if any of you are interested, the link is written across my chest as I speak. It is now live on the Car and Classic site, so go and have a look, check it out. If you want to bid, make sure you're ready to bid. Uh, have your account ready, have your car registered and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, and uh, let's hope it stays in the UK because I would love to catch up with that bus again in the future. And in the meantime, I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Thank you all very much for watching. And hopefully see you next time on Pete and his bus.